Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to Maison Mission. This is episode number 33. The Maison Mission is an inclusive faith community. The word Maison comes from a Greek word that means greater. The Maison Mission is about finding greater spaces for people to hear and experience the good news of Jesus. You can find out more about Maison Mission by visiting MaisonMission.com or through the links in the description of this program. Let's join the band in singing some songs.
Good morning, and thank you for joining with us uh, here at Maison this morning. Uh, my name is Levi, and we are continuing on this series called The Heart of God. And I, I recently, uh, I walked into a restaurant, and I saw someone that I hadn't seen in like two or three years. And we were catching up for a minute, and they looked at me, and they said, you know, I love that sermon that you preached about that, that crazy day in Texas where that guy, like he like paid it forward uh, to your church. Now you have to understand that, that preaching is this, this weird thing. When you have given several hundred sermons, it's really kind of hard to remember much of what you have said. I, I kid you not. I've had people ask me on a Tuesday or Wednesday about something that I said in a sermon the Sunday before. So just like two or three or four days removed. And I have to think really, really hard to remember one single thing that I said because I'm usually already totally committed to the next sermon. And that's just the world that folks who preach live in. I, Sundays are just relentless. They just keep coming and coming and coming. And so here's a little inside secret. If you want to make a pastor's day or even his whole week, just tell him about a sermon that they preached a few years ago and how it's your favorite and how you think about it a lot. We, we love that, right? Even if we can't remember the sermon, uh, we love it when that happens. And, and so when my friend started sharing this story that, that he liked so much and, and remembered and thought of often, I immediately knew what he was talking about. I knew the sermon. I knew the story because it's a, a story about generosity. And I think it's so interesting that, that stories that are rooted in generosity seem to have a stickiness to them. They're, they're easy to remember. They're easy to recall. And a couple of days later, I knew that I had to wrap um, up this series, even though I'm not doing that. We're going to extend this out for another week or two. But I knew that I wanted to share this story about God's heart for generosity, because I believe that God is as generous as he is loving. He's generous in grace, in mercy, in kindness, in love. And, and there's this phrase that is a thread throughout the entire Bible. And it goes like this, your steadfast love endures forever. Your steadfast love endures forever. God's love for us is, is steadfast. It, it never ends. And to me, it's a declaration of his just unending generosity toward us. And so I don't even know if this morning, I don't even know if this is a sermon, but it is a story about generosity that leads to more generosity. And if you have heard stories about how a person in a, a drive through at a restaurant pays for the car behind it, and then that car pays for the car behind them, and on and on and on it goes for 50, 60, 100 cars. It, it's like the generosity becomes contagious. This is kind of one of those stories. So in 2007, we moved from North Carolina to Texas with some good friends of ours to start uh, a new church. It was actually a lot like Maison Mission. And it was a bit of a grind as we only had a handful of people uh, to help us start when we moved there and very few connections in the big city of Dallas. And so we were one of these churches that was hopping from location to location to location. We were in our third meeting space in like 12 months. We had met at an elementary school and then a movie theater and then some borrowed space from another church down the street. And we were waiting to break ground uh, on a building that our denomination was uh, helping us build. And so we were basically this small, homeless church. And at the time, we were averaging maybe 40 people on a Sunday. Uh, that was a good week. And I think at that point in time, like if somebody came and they were pregnant, we counted them for two, right? Just to get the numbers up. But uh, needless to say, nobody was asking us to write a book about church growth, like how to, how to grow a church because it, it just wasn't happening. It was a grind. And so we were in a teaching series about loving our neighbors well. And this house that was just two doors down from where the church was going to be built caught fire and it, it just burned completely to the ground. It was a beautiful home and it was just gone in a flash. 
And so I remember sitting down and, and writing an email to uh, our congregation of like 40 people and basically said something like this. Hey, this is our chance to put into action the stuff that we've been talking about on Sundays. Because sometimes it's easier to talk about being kind and generous than it is to actually take the time to be kind and generous. And I was young and I was trusting at the time. And I said something like this, reply in the email with the amount that you will give and putting put it in the offering on Sunday. So basically it was like, hey, I think you're good for it. Just let me know how much you want to give. And so the email started rolling in. Hey, count us in for 25 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Somebody gave like a couple hundred dollars. And I honestly, I'm getting old and I don't remember what the final total was, but I feel safe in saying it was somewhere between five and seven hundred dollars. Now, I was completely blown away. This was kind of like the first fundraiser thing we had ever done. And I, I would have been happy with like 150 bucks. And so I went around town and I bought a bunch of gift cards to restaurants and Target and Walmart. And, and I put this, I put them in this envelope uh, along with a note. And I was just waiting to drive by and see a homeowner on the property. So like, I was like casing the joint. Luckily it was less than a mile from my house, but I was driving by several times a day and it didn't take long. And I saw a car in the driveway and I pulled in. And I have to admit my heart was, was kind of beating, even though I knew we were doing something kind. I was, I was still a little bit nervous about it for some reason. And so uh, the lady who lived there with her husband was uh, around back with a push broom and she was literally pushing debris off the foundation of what was their home with tears in her eyes. And I almost felt like I was interrupting this, this holy moment as I said, excuse me, ma'am, because that's what you do in Texas. You say, excuse me, ma'am. And, and she turned and was surprised to realize that, that she wasn't alone. And I kind of stuttered and stammered. I introduced myself and said that, hey, I, you know, we have a church that's being built just a uh, hundred feet away from your home. And that we had seen there had been a fire and we wanted to express uh, our sorrow and, and give them some gift cards. And she did the thing that you do when someone you know offers you some unsolicited help. Uh, she told me that they had insurance, that they would be fine. Uh, and I went on to tell her that one of our core values uh, was to love our neighbors well. And we simply wanted them to know tangibly that they were loved by the church that was going to be located closest to their home, even if we had never met. And I asked if I could pray with her before I left and, and she, she welcomed it. I would find out later that they were very involved in another church in town. It wasn't like I was trying to recruit them to our church, but she was very open uh, to a prayer in that moment. And so I went on, I kind of thought the story was over. And I went to church that Sunday and I bragged and I thanked our people for their generosity. I, I was just so pumped to know that we were willing to put into action the stuff that we had been talking about. And so a few months later, we were having a groundbreaking ceremony on the land where the church would be built. And we, we were doing the, the golden shovel thing where you take the pictures and you celebrate the, the beginning of a, a crazy, long, stressful process of building a building. And as we were finishing up, this big truck pulls in and this giant Texan steps out and he asked a few questions and he said, well, my name is Nick and I owned the house uh, that burned down a few months ago. And he said, we were so moved by your generosity uh, in that moment. He said, what you don't know is I, I own a sign company. And when it's time for you to install your church sign, just let me know. And, and we will sell and install you a digital sign at our cost. No markup, no labor. I thought, my goodness, um, generosity was being given uh, to us because of generosity that had been received by them. Generosity that had led to more <laughs> generosity. And we indeed ended up with a church sign that we never could have afforded. It was not even in our wildest dreams uh, that we could have a sign like that. And so uh, just a few months later, we were out with uh, eating with a, a large group from church um, on a Sunday. And it was probably half of the church that was there that day. Now, remember, that's only like 20 people or so, but it, it sounds way better to say that like half the church was there. 
And I had seen Nick across the restaurant and I gave him a wave and, and he waved back. And when our meal was over, uh, everybody was just kind of waiting around for the check because nobody at the table received a check for the meal, like 20 people. And the server told us that someone had taken care of it. And immediately I knew who it was. And it was more generosity given because of generosity received. It was like it was perpetuating itself. And so I figured that was kind of the end of the story. It's amazing, you know, we uh, get a church sign, we got a free meal just from being obedient uh, in generosity. And so a few years later, uh, our building was done and we had grown from like 40 people to a church of 200 people or so. And so I had this nudge from God that he was going to ask us to do something that required a lot of faith. And I remember telling our core leaders that God had told me this. And this went on for months. And they had to think I was crazy because I kept delaying with the details because I had no idea what the details actually were. And after several months of this, I felt like God was leading us to try and purchase one of the two parcels of land that were adjacent to our property. And without buying any more land, we were going to be landlocked on our small property and future growth was going to be stunted because we would lack the land needed to provide parking for a building expansion. There was one big hiccup with this. We basically had no money. I don't know if you've ever run your personal finances like on a week to week basis, but that's basically how the church was running. Um, the the idea that we could afford to purchase anything more than just a cup of coffee was almost unrealistic. And so <laughs> the core leaders looked at me and they said, well, let's pursue it and let's just see what God does. So I reached out to one landowner who wanted something like $350,000 for two acres of land. Well, that, that was no dice. That wasn't going to happen. And there was another piece of property that joined our land. And I called the number on the sign and I got a hold of this lady. And after a few minutes, I realized that she had a heart for new churches because she was helping to start one uh, about an hour away. And she went on to tell me that the the price of the land was $150,000. But then she said, Levi, what do you think is the best that you could do? Now, This is what the lady selling antique knickknacks at the flea market says. They say, well, give me your best offer. Not a property manager selling property in Dallas County of Dallas, Texas. And I said, well, I have no idea. I need to, I need to talk to my leaders. I can't make that call. And so we held an emergency meeting the next day. We crunched some numbers. We prayed about it and we came up with an offer (laughs) that was less than a third of the asking price for this land. And so I called the lady back and told her that we had a number and she set an appointment with the owner. And so I made my way to a meeting with the landowner and I still remember this. I realized I didn't have anything to hold when I went in. So I left the house way early and I went by Office Depot and I bought a legal pad of paper just so I had something to hold in my hands when I got there. And so I get there and apparently this guy's like a geologist or something. There was all of these like geodes and minerals and rocks like all over the place. And the receptionist had me wait and uh, this guy, he just, he came rushing in. Uh, he had long hair, um, just a wild mane of hair. And he ushered me into this side room and I got a good look at him and he was wearing a t-shirt. He had holes in his jeans and he had a Bible so big, it looked like he stole it from the Vatican. And so he sat me in a chair, he drug a chair to the middle of the room. And then he sits on the floor with his back against the wall. And he says, well, Levi, tell me how things are going at the church. And so I told him of the the really great things that God was doing and just how amazed we were at the lives that he was changing. And then he got down to business. He said, well, where are we on an offer? And I told him, I was a little bit embarrassed. I didn't want to insult him. Uh, But I looked at him and I said, well, we are willing to offer $40,000 $40,000 for your $150,000 piece of property. Now, I don't know if you can do math quickly in your head, but we were offering him $110,000 less than his $150,000 asking price. I felt like such a fool in that moment. And our eyes were locked and his head, his head was nodding. And he grabbed that giant Bible that I think he stole from the Vatican. 
And I, I could see when he opened it that he had written nearly as much in the margins as the text of the Bible was in the center. He said, I want to read you something, Levi. He said, 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning of verse 17, says this. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. And then he looked up at me and he said, Levi, you and your church can figure out something else to do with your $40,000 because I am giving you that land. (laughs) I'll never forget looking back at him, completely slack-jawed as I began to laugh while tears were rolling down my cheeks. I literally didn't know whether to laugh or cry, so I did both. I just told him, I said, I've heard of these type of stories, but I had never experienced one to this level, and that it just all seemed so surreal. And we talked for another minute or two, and then he did the second craziest thing of the day. He thanked me for giving him the opportunity to be obedient. The gift giver thanked the gift recipient for the opportunity to be obedient in generosity. And, oh man, I can go back to that day. I could go back to the middle of that room. And even sitting here telling you that story, I'm just reminded of what it feels like to be the recipient of just over the top generosity. And it moves me. It, it, that, that day changed me. It, it helped me to realize a couple of things. One, that when God has really done something in, in our life, as we are moving towards maturity in our relationship with Him, we become grateful for the opportunities to be obedient in a bunch of different things, but in generosity. Generosity becomes this thing that isn't a burden to bear as much as it is an opportunity to respond in obedience and make a difference in someone else's life. And this kind of generosity also reveals the fact that that God has, has convinced the gift giver that there is plenty to go around, that, that there, they, they live with this philosophy that, that, that there is more than enough, that, that resources are not scarce, but they are, are plentiful. And that as we respond in generosity, that, that it is going to be passed down the line. And, and Maison, this is who I want us to be as a church. It's what I want for us as individuals, that we look at opportunities to be generous with with wide-eyed enthusiasm, because we know that it's going to make a difference. Not because it reflects good on us, but because it reflects good on the God that we serve. I want us to be that church, that when given the chance to be generous, we relish the opportunity to be obedient. Because I believe that God's heart toward us and for us is generous. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you're a generous God and that as we are created in your image, as we are refined more and more into that image, God, that generosity is a part of what overtakes our heart, that it moves uh, from becoming this thing that is difficult for us because it seems like there, there will never be enough to an understanding that, that you always provide. And so, Father, this is our prayer for Maison, uh, that, that we would be known as lavishly generous in our community, in this country, and around the world. 
We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you for being our way maker, God, our miracle worker, our healer. Thank you for pursuing us, for chasing us. God, thank you for loving us right where we are. God, with our hurts, our hang-ups, our imperfections, our challenges, thank you for loving us right where we are. God, I pray that as we leave this place, that we would be more like you. God, that we would be salt and flavor to our world and that we would be a light that shines and points right back to you. God, we praise you, we thank you, and we love you. Amen. Just a few reminders before you go. House churches are starting up the week of September 12th. This is a great way for you and your family to get plugged in to the Maison mission. Sign up today on the Digital Connect card. Our next Maison IRL gathering in real life is today. We're meeting for lunch at the Lowry home at noon. Burgers and hot dogs will be provided. We just ask that you bring a side or a dessert to share if you're able. If you'd like to join us, email info at maisonmission.com for directions. We'd like to invite all elementary, middle, and high school students to a blessing of the backpacks and ice cream social on August 15th at 2 p.m. Bring your backpack so we can bless it as you enter a new school year. Please bring your favorite ice cream topping to share with others. The pool will be open for those who wish to swim. Sign up on the Digital Connect card. Maison Mission is a non-denominational church. These programs and conversations are only possible through the financial support and donations from people like you. If our program encouraged you today, please consider supporting the Maison Mission with a one-time gift or on a recurring basis. You can give through MaisonMission.com and follow the link to give. You can also text the dollar amount to 84321 and follow the links to Maison Mission. We'll also be displaying our giving links on a slide at the conclusion of this program. Thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you all have a fantastic week. Thank you.